Warning. The following reading contains subject matter that some listeners might find disturbing or difficult to hear. Listener discretion is advised. If you or someone you know has been affected by the real-world themes portrayed in this production, please follow the links in the description for agencies and organizations that can provide practical help and advice. I was excited to move away from the city for my mom's new job, but I really hate this old house. Everything is decades old and deserves to be rotting in a junkyard somewhere. Furniture and floorboards creak and crack and moan with even the slightest touch, making it so you never really feel quite safe sitting in the old kitchen chairs. There's old water stains on the ceiling from a crumbling roof, and the walls have peeling wallpaper that look as crusty as the plaster beneath it. My room is especially depressing. It must have once belonged to a young girl who was obsessively drawn to the color pink, my least favorite color. The wallpaper is pink with yellow and pink flowers. The carpet looks as if it had been pink once, but now resembles a pale flesh color, littered with paint and wax stains from pink candles. My mother promised me that we can paint it soon, but the rest of the house needs more attention, so I know better than to get my hopes up. I do the best I can to cover this hideous place with posters, blankets, and a rug, all depicting different stages of obsession in my life. The superhero stage, NASCAR racing phase, wizards and witches movie phase. My dad always told me that I acted more like a boy than I do a girl. I bet he planned to put me in this room just to spite me. My little sister Abby, though, she got a much better room than I did. But she wouldn't give it up when we moved in, and of course Dad sided with her again. She's always been his favorite. I'm just used to it by now. Her room is directly above mine, so unless I have my earbuds shoved into my ears, I have to endure her off-tune singing to herself and her toys on a daily basis. Other than music, the only thing I really have to distract myself from the horrendous house are my video games. <laughs> They're my only solace. It's a little after 10 when I pop in one of my game discs and settle on the rug at the base of my bed. The volume is mute and the lights are off, so no one is none the wiser. My mom never checks to make sure if I'm asleep anyways, so I've been getting away with this for a couple of months now. I'm getting close to finishing a really difficult level when I hear something strange. It sounds like something heavy being pushed across the floor in spurts. It's so odd. I turn off the TV and I reluctantly press my ear into one of the walls, trying to find the source of the sound. The sound fades and I end up standing there like an idiot. I chalk it up to the lack of sleep, so I shut off my game and go to bed. The next couple nights are pretty normal for the most part. I convince myself that I'm just hearing things and that this old house is just messing with me. But sure enough, the sound starts back up again. This time, I actually figured out where it's coming from. My floor. <laughs> or rather, under it. I'm on the main level of the house, and my parents' and sisters' room are upstairs, and the only thing beneath me is the basement. I weigh the pros and cons of investigating the basement, and decide to not follow the horror movie trope and check it out in the morning instead. Basements and old houses are naturally creepy, but this place is just disgusting. Whoever lived here before us didn't clean up their junk or it just ended up all down here. There are random boxes filled with useless trinkets, newspapers, holiday decorations, and God knows what else. There are more rickety looking chairs and a worn out sofa in the center of the room where a single light bulb without a cover hangs from the ceiling. Even with daylight pouring in through the tiny window and the lights on, it's still impossible to see it all. 
I'm not sure why this place gives me the creeps, but it just does. It's straight out of a horror film, and there's no way I'm sticking around here to do some sleuthing. I'll just tell my parents about the sound, and that will be that. I decide to bring this up after dinner. Mom was being her usual self, constantly over-worrying about everything and everyone. Abby, honey, why aren't you eating? I don't know, not really hungry. Abby says, shrinking into herself like she doesn't like the sudden attention. Some days I would just kill for that much attention from mom and dad. I decide to give her a break from the spotlight, though, and tell my parents what happened. I try to brush it off casually, but my mother took it seriously. She started worrying about the door down there, the one that I didn't see, that it could have been unlocked or someone might have broken in. My dad just laughs, assuring her that he'll check the lock again, and then that was the end of it. Abby shuffles off to bed, and as I'm getting ready to go to sleep, as my mother thinks, I realize I haven't heard Abby's stupid songs in a while. Maybe that's why I've been getting some decent sleep these days. Well, other than staying up for gaming. That night, though, I heard it again. Immediately, I pressed my ear to the ground, holding my breath, trying to decipher what it could be. A water heater? Unlikely. It's not a clank, it's a slide or a skid, a jarring pattern of them disjointed in a row. This time, though, I hear something else. The unmistakable sound of a person breathing in a panic. Then it, it hits me. There really is a bandit in the basement. He or she is looking for something. I can hear them pushing around the boxes. Now that I know I'm not crazy and it's not supernatural, I gather up my courage and a flashlight, and I make my way to the basement. I'm hoping that if they get caught, maybe they'll just run out. I wasn't going to go down there, but I could at least sound menacing and authoritative. I stood at the closed basement door and took a deep breath before slamming it open, hoping to scare whoever it was, but scaring myself in the process. Hey! I know you're down there! Fuck off before I call the cops! I shout, and the sound suddenly stops. It's eerily quiet for a long moment, and I start to panic. What if they had a weapon and were coming up the stairs right now? Just take what you want and go! I close the door and run in place to give the illusion that I'm running back to my room, but my morbid curiosity keeps me grounded to the spot. The scraping sound never did come back, but something far worse took its place. I swear to God it sounded like someone was having an asthma attack, but it grew more powerful and distorted. Then I heard the pile of boxes crash into the floor, followed by some more thumping and wailing. By this point, I'm scared shitless, so much so that I can't even move my legs. My better senses are screaming at me to run, but I'm firmly planted in the spot. Then, I hear footsteps ascending the stairs, coming directly for me. Finally, I break myself from whatever trance was rooted me to the spot. I lock the door moments before something hard slams against the door once, and again repeatedly. Tears of confusion and pure terror cascade down my cheeks as I run to my bedroom and straight under the covers. Should I have called the cops? Or... But would they even believe me? Was it really a bandit, or was it something worse? This house is ancient, maybe. Maybe it is haunted. All I can seem to do is curl up and cry until I eventually fall asleep. At breakfast, nobody believed me. Not a single one of my family members heard the sounds from last night, and now I'm questioning if it really even happened. Even so, my mother soundly reprimands me for telling this scary story with Abby, who's nearby. When I was her age, I was watching all kinds of stuff like this on the television, so I don't know why she gets so bent out of shape about it. My mom and dad go back downstairs into the basement while I wait on bated breath. Minutes later, they come back up and look at me as if I just dreamt the whole thing. I'm not crazy! There's a... 
a bandit or something in the basement. I swear. But they won't listen, and they won't believe me. Soon after, my mom leaves for work, and Dad goes out with his friends, leaving me to babysit Abby. I am super pissed off and irritated, and taking care of an eight-year-old is the last thing I want to do right now. Abby has been quiet for most of the day, and I wonder if my story really did scare her. She was shut up in her room, and I barely heard a peep. Worried, I went up to check on her and could hear her talking to herself from the hallway. She was singing a little rhyme that she had made up herself, and as I listened, all I could do was stand there, as transfixed and horrified as I was the night before. Just stay calm and don't tell mom, daddy's playing games in the basement. Keep your voice down, don't wear a frown. Don't you know you're my favorite? Last night's sister came to see our little game, but she locked me with daddy in the bay.